Okay. Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to Alaska Book Week. Um, big thanks to the Alaska Center for the Book for hosting this event. And tonight, what we're, what we're talking about is anthologies in Alaska. And we have three writers who, are, who are, have all contributed or edited um, an, a collection of um, stories, essays, uh, that are that are focused on Alaska. So the, these are anthologies that uh, have an Alaska focus. Um, so I have with me tonight uh, Mahogany Magnetic, Wave Mahogany, um, and um, she resides in Anchorage, Alaska uh, at her Wonder Woman Wonder Dome, which I'd like to visit sometime. Um, she's a prolific writer who is cooler than ice water has earned degrees in anthropology, a BA, English, BA, um, forensic death investigation, graduate certific certificate, and a master's of fine arts in creative writing and literary arts. She is currently working on getting her life together, a Coast Guard veteran, community organizer, and a human rights advocate who is world renowned, nationally recognized and locally accepted as the undisputed people's champ because she believes poetry is therapeutic. And I agree. Um, some of her published works include Shh, Be Quiet, Building Fires in the Snow, that came out, that's an anthology that came out in 2016. Acrimonious Black Woman Sparks Climate Change Debate with the President, that's from Alaska Women Speak, and it came out in spring 2019. Girlfriend, What's Your Recipe for Lemonade? Woman Scream, the International Poetry Anthology of Female Voices, 2020. And her first novel, The Mad Fantastic 2098, uh, which was in 2020, and Death by a Thousand Kisses at Miss Mahogany Bones Murder Mystery, which was, uh, came out in 2021. So welcome, Mahogany. Mm -hmm. We also have, um, going around the, the bend here, uh, Mary Lee Hayes. So wave, Mary Lee. As a young girl, Mary Lee Hayes began freelance writing and journalism pursuits by writing, printing, and distributing a regular newspaper journal that contains stories, cartoons, interviews, and poems. When she was 16, her first book of stories was professionally printed. At age 20, she graduated as a registered nurse and completed studies with the famous Writers School of Westport, Connecticut. Through the years, she wrote numerous poems and stories, getting much of her work published. She graduated from the University of Alaska Fairbanks with a Bachelor of Arts degree in English with a writing emphasis. Continuing her love for journalism, Mary Lee was the managing editor of the Alaska Women Speak Women's Journal for eight years and had two additional books published. Her biggest endeavor to date was co-editing the Alaska Women Speak Anthology book, which was published by Ember Press in 2021. And that's what she'll be speaking about tonight. She appreciates her ongoing writer's view of the Chugach Mountains, where she lives in her log cabin near Eagle River. Okay, and last but not least, we have Lucian Childs. Lucian Childs is a fiction writer whose debut, Dreaming Home, is set to be published by uh, Biblio Biblioasis Spring 2023. He was a Peter Taylor Fellow at the Kenyon Review Writers Workshop a recipient of the Rasmussen Foundation Individual Artist Project Award and a finalist for the Faulkner Wisdom Short Story Award. He has been an artist in residence at Birdcliff Art Colony and at Artscape Gibraltar Point. Lucian is a co-editor of the 2017 Lambda Literary Finalist, Building Fires in the Snow, a collection of Alaska LGBTQ short fiction and poetry. His stories have appeared or are forthcoming in Grain, The Puritan, and Prairie Fire, among others. 
You can find him on the web at www.lucianchilds.com and on Twitter at Lucian Childs. Okay, so welcome everybody. Uh, it's really interesting. Everyone has such, um, you know, uh, different tentacles out into the into the writing world. It's such a big world. Um, writing, all the different genres, publishing, all the different publishing houses, ways to go about it. So this is a really fun um, collection of people we have tonight. Um, what I'd like to start with is I'd like to go around and have you each tell me a little bit about the anthology you're representing tonight, whether you are a contributing um, a writer to that anthology, if you're an editor or both, and just a little bit about it. Mahogany, would you like to start? Yeah, sure. Um, first of all, thank you so much. And uh, it's like happy to be back on this panel um, for Alaska Book Week 2022. It's always an exciting year, exciting time of year. Um, I'm really excited to be a part of this work. Um, a contributor to Wheels on Ice. And just so I don't, you know, mess up anything here, because I feel it's a, it's a lot on me as a, as a contributor to explain like some of the bit about the larger project. I'm just gonna read what we was out there in the universe now regarding this work. Wheels on Ice reveals Alaska's key role in bicycling, both as a mode of travel and as an endurance sport, as well as its special allure for those seeking the proverbial struggle against nature. This collection opens with the first bicycle boom and the advent of the safety bicycle in the 1800s. At approximately the same time gold was discovered in Alaska and the Yukon territory. As bicycles evolved, Alaskans were among the first to innovate. The fat bike, for example, evolved from the mountain bike in the late 1980s to a wider frame bike with a fatter tire, making snow biking more accessible and giving birth to the I did a bike race. More recently, ultra endurance cyclist Lael Wilcox wrote all the major roads in the state, totaling more than 4,500 miles of gravel and pavement. Jessica Cherry and Frank, the late Frank Seuss this diverse group of stories covers cycling both past and present for writers commuting in every kind of weather to those seeking long distance adventure in the most remote sections of the United States. These stories will inspire cyclists to ride into their own stories uh, in Alaska and beyond. Yeah, I, I hope that does exist. <laughs> and, um, Oh my goodness, I just forgot the title of my piece that I submitted. Well, if you want, we could each talk about the anthologies first and then the pieces that we've contributed. All right, all right. We can go back and edit this as we're recording, right? <laughs> no editing. <laughs> um, Mary Lee, would you like to go next? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, the Alaska Women Speak Anthology is a compilation of photographs, art, articles and poems taken from the Alaska Women's Speak journals. Um, the journals have been published uh, now since 1992. And um, the Alaska Women's Speak anthology book was decided upon myself and another former managing editor of the Alaska Women's Speak Journals. Um, many of the writers or artists, photographers in the book are just everyday women. Uh, the goal of the journals and thus the anthology were to share voices. Um, something happens and someone writes a wonderful poem, but what is their avenue to share that with others? And Alaska Women Speak goal was never about money. It was about giving an avenue, a voice for women to share their stories and experiences with one another. Um, that journal continues today. It has changed looks. Uh, 
and I am only a senior advisor of the journals, but um, this is a copy from the original artwork that was on the journal way back in 1992. And uh, each journal and thus sections of our book have various themes, as you can see from this um, cover uh, from Lisa Rogers' artist, artistry that had a theme of holiday and Christmas and good times like that. Um, many of our themes within the book might have a few pages. Obviously, this one is horses, uh, artwork done by my friend and a fellow artist here, um, Maria Tallis. So it was thought by Angie and I that we wanted to um, have a place where some of the voices were a tribute, uh, well, that we gave tribute to those voices and an enduring work, a book being more of a lasting tribute. Uh, many times we throw magazines or something away. So uh, a major part of my contribution was to go through, which ended up to be 98 journals. We covered 25 years from 2017 or 1992 through 2017. So that was a lot of journals to go through. Um, Angie Slingluff, the other co-editor and I uh, worked together over the telephone and computer Zooms to put each page together. Angie, uh, as the layout artist, would combine the words and pictures together. And together we made decisions about the editing uh, and made sure that the original voice of each contributor uh, was in those stories. We did as little editing and revising as, as possible. Um, an, another part of the, um, that I'd like to show is uh, Martha Amore's work was published in the book. And this article on ski during with her dogs, um, was taken from winter 2002 and uh, did not know that we were going to be talking about that uh, today. And I'm very happy that uh, her article was one of the ones in it, no doubt that. I was thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that uh, journal no doubt had to do with adventure. Uh, we tried to give, um, a wide variety of attitudes, adventures, um, perhaps poems from the heart, trying to have a balance throughout the book. And we were very, very grateful that we connected with a wonderful publisher for this anthology. And that's Amber Press of Palmer, Alaska, uh, who gave us that beautiful book that uh, we will always be proud of. The artwork, of, yeah, the cover uh, is from Teresa Asconi, a uh, well-known artist here in Alaska. And uh, very happy to have that cover work by her. Lovely. All right, well, thank you, Mary Lee. Um, and before we move on to um, Lucian, Mahogany, is there a cover design yet for Wheels on Ice? Do you know? Oh, you're muted. Uh, I'm muted. I'm so good with not being muted. Um, no, I was that time. Yeah, there is a cover. There is a cover design. Um, maybe I can just share, put the link for you here in the, um, oh, okay. in the chat, and then you can pull it up that way. Oh, okay. Um, Let's see. You know how to screen share? 
Yeah. Okay. We'll get our book for your. Oh, great. Okay, so let me um, share the screen and then we'll pull that up. Um, oh, let's see, I have to, oh, hold on. I think I have to pull it up first. Okay, now let me share the screen. Okay, oh yeah, so we can see it here. Click on the image. Um, yeah, that's beautiful. Do you know who did the art? I'm, I'm just curious. No, I'm, yeah, no, I'm not familiar with the the, uh, the artist. I mean, as a contributor, like, and I'm sure we'll talk more about this and, and we'll talk more about anth anthologies. You know, you write these yeah. works all time, all time ago and it takes a while before they see the light of day. And so, oh, so you yeah. just following the well, emails. I always, I always um, enjoy when the artwork on, on a book is um, by, you know, like in, for an Alaska book to have an Alaskan artist. I think that's lovely. Um, I was glad to hear uh, Mary Lee say that. Um, okay, on to Lucian Childs. Uh, well, speaking of Alaskan artists, we um, had a, a, one of Indra Ariaga's abstract works that we uh, really liked for the theme of building fires in the snow which was an anthology that came out in 2016. Um, so Martha today is the moderator of this panel, but she was also the guiding force of this anthology. She came to me in, gosh, I don't know, 2014, 2013 maybe even, it was before I moved away from Alaska. I live in Toronto now. And asked me if I wanted to help out um, on a uh, LGBTQ uh, anthology of fiction and uh, poetry and uh, of course I said yes uh, ecstatically and um, I won't go too much in the process now because I think we're going to talk about that in the second question but um, it is exactly what it says it's an anthology of uh, LGBTQ uh, fiction and poetry um, um, by either people who were living in Alaska at the time or had lived in Alaska for some time. So we wanted it to be, you know, a real Alaskan voice and real Alaskan um, voices. We also, we didn't really know what to expect when we were getting the work in, but I wanted it to be a work that featured um, um, stories and poetry about the urban Alaskan experience, because I didn't think that that really had been represented, uh, at least nowhere that I had seen. There are many, many fine uh, stories and nonfiction pieces about um, the environment, nature, and animals, and um, all of the things that Alaska is so um, known for in the public mind. Uh, it, they're not, Alaska isn't, as known for its fine opera company and symphony, symphony and its many theater companies and its brew pubs. And uh, I was very heartened that all the stories that we uh, selected really featured the urban experience of living primarily in Anchorage, but also there were some pieces I think set in Kenai and, um, and in, Palmer, in Palmer Wasilla. So um, yeah. And, we, um, we were nominated for a Lambda Literary Award in 2017 and got to go to New York and, and have a great party. And uh, we lost to a Canadian anthology. So um, I, I felt kind of okay about that. If we have to lose to somebody to lose to a Canadian anthology, I thought was pretty good since I now live in Canada. Yeah, where, where's your loyalty? <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. a Canadian American writer now. <laughs> So um, I, uh, the next question is, how did you come up with the idea for the anthology um, if you were an editor? And um, Mohogany, my question for you, because you're a contributor, is how did you come to be in that anthology? Like, how, how did you hear about it? Um, 
So I guess we'll start with you, Mahogany, and then work our way around. Mm. I, I don't remember how. I, I just got an email one day, you know. It's like it's like magic, you know, just sitting at home in my computer and the email came from Jessica Cherry saying, Mahogany, you want to be a part of this book? I was like, yeah, sure. Um, I really don't, I really don't know, don't know how I became a contributor, but once I, you know, I really don't know how. I really don't, I really don't know how. And I I know that I do share a lot of my my journeys uh, on social media. And I'm just gonna gonna assume that, you know, Jessica and the other editors like saw that and know that not only am I a writer, but I'm also an avid, you know, cyclist as well too, and asked if I had any stories on that. And I was like, oh yeah, I got the best story ever. Um, and that was based on my 2015 um, We Are Human um, Century Ride, in which I rode my then hybrid bicycle that I've had since 2009. I rode it around Anchorage like for a total of 100 miles over the course of a day. And it was gruesome. It was, it was gruesome, even though I like had like, you know, done some conditioning and everything, but had an old bike and it was heavy and the spoke went out like 30 minutes into the ride, and like 30 miles into the ride. So I rode 70 miles with the back tire dragging. And then it was like August, so it started raining and everything. And you know what most cyclists, I think in the cycling world who, who will fit can do a hundred mile bike ride and like, you know, eight hours or something like this. It was a full-time job for me with overtime. So I did like 16 hours on the bike that day. And um, so I wrote about that, um, not just the ride, but what led to, to that ride. And to one, I wanted to do two things, which I did was bring more awareness to transgender people and transgender identities, so let people know that we are human too. We experience things as well too and to raise um, funds for mental health. Um, and so that was, was the money went to uh, Naomi, the National Association on Mental Illness. I think I got that correct. Um, and I just set up a GoFundMe page and everything. It was, it was, just, it was really cool. I was, um, when it came, the idea came to me, I said, yeah, yeah, I just do this, do this right. And so part of the, the campaign was like advertising the, the campaign for this ride. And this is stuff I wrote about. So I wrote about the, my, my campaign. I, was, I think I wrote about being interviewed on, uh, for, for a story that was on NPR. Um, I definitely wrote about the stunts. I did a couple of little like stunts and they're not real stunts on the bike. It's basically me jumping off a curb and like zooming the camera in. Like, yeah, I did something. And then, um, I have another stunt, which was like really the, the, the center of the story because the title of the piece is that one magnetic time I jumped over five cars on a bicycle. That was, that was the, so the title to, to that effect. So I can't really give away that, 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 how that happened and everything, but I jumped over five cars. So, you know, that's just all that matters. Nice. So that became like the, the you know, the heart of the, the story and, and, uh, and my journey. And, the process was just like really cool because there's some somewhere down the line, uh, Jessica Cherry like messaged me and said, "Hey, can we use these photos like from my um, from my my website, uh, mcmahoganymagnetic.com?" And I've always been making my little videos, music videos and stuff. So I had this music video for me on one of my other bikes and stuff. And so she like took some screenshots on that. So. I'm looking forward to see what that's going to be printed like. Uh, I didn't really think anyone would pay attention to my little website stuff, but it's cool. So it's like, that's like my contribution to Wheels on Ice. Nice. And I would just say, I don't think it's magic that, that she emailed you. I think you're, you're very high profile and most writers in Alaska have heard of you. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I'm sure uh, you were on her, her list, right? Uh, yeah, well, right. it definitely, it, it definitely goes back to building fires in the snow, and uh, and for for me as mahogany magnetic after transition and transition and, and my name changed, that is the first published published work that 
of MC Mahogany Magnetic. I have other published, you know, writings and stuff prior to that, but that was the first and just like a wonderful experience there. Oh, nice. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely. You learn something new every day. <laughs> Uh, well, let's see, Mary Lee, would, um, I know you talked a little about how, how the anthology came together, but like who, whose idea was it initially to do the anthology? Well, it actually was mine. And uh, um, there's a quote from uh, Goethe, and it says, whatever you think you can do or dream you can, begin it. And that's what I thought needed to have happen is just simply begin it. Uh, and so I uh, called Angie knowing she was very good with layout artistry and uh, said, we need to put together uh, an Alaska Women Speak anthology. And let's have this anthology uh, be loaded with pictures. I'm just turning to any page in the book and you'll see that there's many, many pictures throughout and uh, putting those together. Yeah, that um, just seemed to be important to see the woman uh, who was sharing her work. Uh, so Angie is the one that put the photographs or artwork on the pages. She knew how to do that. Um, so that at the point that we delivered it to um, Amber Press, which we felt just led to do, to go with them, um, they were very enthused. Uh, Kayleen Johnson Sullivan is the owner of that Ember Press Publishing. And uh, I think that they were probably quite amazed that we had done so much layout already on the book. Um, the book is about 350 pages. And uh, so it had a lot of substance to it, but they were so easy to work with us and um, gave us suggestions for sure. Uh, no, this one is a little too long or I don't know how we can fit this in this area. And, and, but always the decision was left for Angie and I. That was probably the hardest part about the anthology was, oh my gosh, I do not want to take different stories out. We kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh, and uh, it took Angie and I four years to put the book together. Um, we have uh, a quote on the back from Gloria Steinem, uh, which was impressive for us. Uh, other well-known persons like Fran Ulmer, Rhonda McBride, Vivian Faith Prescott, perhaps you know all those names um, that simply to uh, go from scratch, basically, as far as the idea. But I had put together little books in the past and um, getting older, I thought, I do not want these voices to die. Um, let's get as many of them as we can in one place uh, to honor them. And we put in the book that if you don't see your name in it, it's only because we didn't have room. It got heavier and heavier. <laughs> so, um, so we had to, uh, had to stop. But um, the Goth quote says that just starting something has genius, power, and magic in it. And there might be someone, you know, taking a look at this panel and listening to what all we have done and just say, oh man, why have I not written this down? You know, why am I not sharing this with somebody? Uh, that way it'll last. And 
the stories won't die with me. And um, that was very important for us that we ha help as many women as possible be in the book. Lovely. Um, so Lucian, I know you've already shared some about how the anthology um, Building Fires in the Snow came together. Do you have anything else to say on the process? Sure. Um, it's noisy here in the big city, sorry. Um, Martha had pitched the, um, the book to University of uh, Fairbanks, University of Alaska Press, and they had um, except and they have you know they said that they were interested in the idea. So but you know, failed us to really make it come together. So um, we tr we did not send out an open call. We did not want people that had you know, been on a cruise to Alaska, um, sending in stories. We wanted stories by real Alaskans. And we broadened that to in, in, include people that had lived in Alaska for some time, but who were no longer there. Because as a person that lived in Alaska for 25 years, but now does not, I still feel that I'm an Alaskan. And I feel that I always will be. And um, it kind of gets inside you and won't let you go. So. Um, and we also, you know, of course, wanted the uh, the the submissions to be, a, you know, the best quality we could find, but also and also the most diverse that we could find. So we were happy to have all kinds of people. And, and I was going to mention, yeah, and Mahogany was in that, and uh, her pieces were amazing and lively and and just great. And um, so it was actually a long process of of reading work and we would get together at the, um, what was the name of that restaurant? The Rusty Goat or the something goat. I don't know if it's Rustic still- Rustic Goat, it's still there. Rustic, Rustic Goat and we'd have lunch and talk about stories and which ones should be in and out. And, and then there was a long process to determine what the order should be, you know, so that there was a kind of a flow to it in, in, in a way. And then I think, then after that, we had to write the introduction and they really, the University of Alaska Press obviously is an academic press. So they really wanted an academic uh, introduction. So we um, submitted one with the final uh, composited manuscript, but they made us go back a couple of times and re really work that inter introduction to try to, um, put the anthology both in the context of, of, of you know, contemporary gay fiction uh, and uh, in the context of what was, what is going on in Alaska as well. So um, it, it took us, I'd say a couple of years um, to all told to, to, you know, put that together. And then, um, then, you know, we also, of the course, it was my first experience of putting together a, a book. I'm, I'm doing that now with Biblio Oasis, but to try to figure out what was the cover, that took, we, it was a lot of back and forth on that too. And before we struck on this beautiful uh, cover by Indra, uh, am I pronouncing your name right? Name right? Yeah. And, um, then proofreading and all that stuff. It was a really long, I, I felt like I could have, you know, I'm just coming out with my debut novel this year. I feel like I could have had a couple of, of my own books out by this time, but I, you know, I think I felt and, and Martha felt that it was really, this was an important project that nobody had done anything like this before. And I think that's what attracted University of Alaska Press. And, and you know, it's still out there in the world, you know, we, I, you know, we get, I see it, sometimes I'll do a little search or something. I see it's included in lists, you know, for libraries all over the country for Gay Pride Week and, um, or Gay Pride Month. And so it's still out there having an impact. Yeah. And really we weren't able to get native voices really uh, in the book. And that was a real heartbreak for, for us. And cause I mean, how could you not have a, an, antho an Alaskan anthology without that, but uh, we just weren't able to, to find people. Um, people didn't 
submit. I, I really was banking on five who ended up at the end of the day not not submitting. And um, you don't have what you don't have. Right. But hopefully there will be an anthology, another one coming out. Um, I, I'm hoping. One thing that a lot of people, when they first put a book, you know, whether it's an anthology or, or their own collection, um, they first get a book out. The editing process can be a shock for, for some writers. And um, this is the one thing I'll say about an MFA program. I feel like MFA programs prepare you really well for the editing process. Um, because if there's a professional editor, like in my case, my story, I had to change almost every single sentence in my of, of the uh, story that I contributed to Building Fire. They, um, the editor wanted me to shift perspectives. And so it really, it really meant like changing just about every single sentence um, because it was in the second person and, and he wanted it in the first person. And um, so of course, initially as a writer, I'm like, what, you know, but then I'm like, okay, you know, and I did it and I actually did like the results. Um, and that is something though, uh, that I was thankful for my MFA process that it, they really uh, pounded into. It's a manuscript, it's not your heart and soul, it feels like it is, but at the end of the day, it's a manuscript and people are, are um, tinkering with it. You know, they're, they're thinking of an audience, they're, you know, uh, and in, I think in my case, it did make the story better and, and more accessible than it was. Um, I'll never forget Eowyn Ivy, uh, you know, talking about her experience publishing, um, the Snow Child, and she had to change, I think it was something like 40,000 words, like, you know, it was a huge, massive, like, she didn't think she could do it at first, what the editor wanted her to do. She's like, I, I can't, that's a different book, you know, but she did it, and she got shortlisted for a uh, Pulitzer Prize, <laughs> so yeah, that's, I, uh, I think people don't understand that, uh, that how much influence the editor has on a book. They just think, well, it kind of just sprang forth from the writer just like it is on the page. But, you know, I just, I, when my book is coming out in the spring, you know, I did two years working with two amazing uh, writers and editors, and it was an amazing process. And uh, I am, yeah, I'm the better writer for it. And certainly the book is a way better book for it. And I, I think that's true here too. I mean, we, we didn't edit too many of the book, or, book uh, too many of the stories, but was, sometimes we, we stepped in, you know, when we felt we needed to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay, so we'll move on to the next question. Um, and I'm keeping an eye on the time because we have an hour, which means we have Gosh, only about 15 minutes left. So um, what I'd like to do is um, ask you how you feel about anthologies as a category. Do you think they're important? You know, what is their importance? What do anthologies accomplish? Um, and we'll start there. So whoever wants to jump in and, and start with that one. Why anthologies? What's special about anthologies? I was, um, uh, I'll jump in real quick here that I think they're important. Um, to me, they give a historical portrayal of a variety of persons that are bound together by a common endeavor or uh, a, a common theme. And you can see those different perspectives and um, I think that's important uh, because, you know, a, a story, let's say if it was about, um, you know, a bear, let's just say it had a, you know, that all people that have had encounters with bears, well, it gives you a perspective that not all of them are awful. Mm. Uh, some of them are a, a communication, actually, with, and that the bear is not out to eat you. It's kind of curious, maybe. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of bears, just like there's all kinds of people and all kinds of voices. And an anthology 
puts those together in one cover and uh, presents that to people. I just believe it can give us a wider perspective, just um, like when you're talking about fires in the snow, uh, different experiences, uh, a commonality of, uh, of LGBTQ, but a, many, many experiences, but that underlining perspective put together, bound together by that theme. Uh, I, I think it's important. Hmm. I'll add on that um, I feel like anthologies are like the gateway drug to, <laughs> to reading, uh, gateway drug to poetry, gateway drug to fiction or various subject matters. Because like some of the things, that I remember the works that really got me interested in writing what came out of anthologies. You know, because you you have it's like a, a textbook of school, like these many different stories, and you read this one story or this one poem, and like oh my gosh, I want to know more about this, or it links you to the other threads in that anthology or how it goes. Oh, let me see something else in this anthology, and here, so I think it can be really, really uh, engage many readers and pique interest that may not have been there before. And anthologies gives us the opportunity to have multiple perspectives in one, one space. It also gives an opportunity to make space and platforms for new writers, emerging writers. Um, I know, like I say, for, for me, it, it does, but many times anthologies I've read, I've, it's given me opportunity to, to discover new writers I probably wouldn't have, you know, come across on, on, on my own or just random. And sometimes there are many writers who have hundreds of words, short stories out there, but they'll have novels, their own titles per se. So it, 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 it opens up the world in, in so many ways. I just think uh, there needs to be more anthologies. And I've been like brainstorming some ideas for, for an anthology myself for the last like few months and stuff. So we'll see. Oh, I hope I hope you do one. That would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love your perspective on that. It's almost like if you've got the famous band and then the opening band, mm -hmm. you know, and the opening band can get some some uh, uh, public notice, you know, for opening for the the famous one. And um, yeah, I, I've definitely discovered a lot of writers through anthologies. And sometimes I'll buy the anthology because I know a couple of the writers because they're really famous, right? And then come across, yeah, a new voice and Google them, and oh, they do have a book, right? Yeah, that's great, Lucian. I think for me, it's a couple of things. You know, I don't have an MFA. Uh, um, so for, for me, you know, uh, uh, anthologies for a long time were kind of my uh, creative writing school, you know, where I went to find out, you know, what, you know, excellence was in a short story. So I'd read the, you know, best American short stories. And after I moved to Canada, Bibli Oasis uh, uh, publishes every year a best Canadian short stories. And there's the Henry collection that comes out each year. And, and so, you know, I could read, you know, what, you know, some people thought of were the best. And, uh, you know, really was a lot of food for thought and was, uh, you know, it was kind of my school. The other thing, you know, I'm because with our anthology, Building Fires, you know, it really enables like um, underrepresented voices, you know, to be heard. I mean, who knew there was even a queer community in Alaska before our book came out, you know, and uh, now they do. <laughs> and um, uh, also regional, you know, work, you know, uh, uh, I think that is a great way to, to uh, focus work uh, that might have a commonality, you know, set in, in a, like in the South or the West or Alaska or, you know, where I write a lot about Texas, you know, where I came from. So uh, uh, for, for me, uh, anthologies, you know, serve a, a really important um, purpose. Okay, great. Let's see, we're getting down to our last question, which is wonderful because we only have 10 minutes left. <laughs> um, and this touches on something Mahogany said. Um, do you have any future ideas for anthologies that either you would want to pull together or that you wish somebody would? And I know like not everybody 
is up to pull together an anthology, but maybe one of our viewers will be like, oh, I should, I'm going to do that and take Goth's advice. So can you think of any ideas? Future anthologies. I, I jotted, I'll jump in here. Uh, uh, just do, um, I was thinking of an anthology book uh, that has been written, uh, particular tales about, um, I know the Iditarod mushers have, uh, you know, there's different books with, um, you know, just tales maybe by Libby Riddles or, mm -hmm. uh, but have, have we, is there an anthology of the Iditarod, the best tales of a multitude of persons that have done the Iditarod, both famous and, you know, Susan Butcher, and then the unknown musher. Um, I would, that, I think would be if it hasn't been done. It's not one that I've seen, but I thought of that as a possibility. It's not That's something me. that I probably could take on at this point in my life, but it sounded like a interesting Alaskan themed anthology. Oh, that's lovely. And even if something, I don't think there's anything that's been published recently anyway. Um, I, I just interviewed three Iditarod writers um, this past March who have amazing memoirs. Oh my gosh. And, and um, none of them are, con were like top runners, you know, not like winning the Iditarod, but, um, but amazing writers. And so even if it was something that happened in the past, it's like, why not do a current one? That, that's a great idea, Mary Lee. Uh, Mahogany or Lucian, do you have any ideas? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, couldn't do anything right now. I got so many writing projects uh, on tap that that I, I booked for probably the rest of my life. You know, uh, since I'm 73 years old, oh, uh, you're going to live a long time. Oh okay. <laughs> yeah, well, long I, time. I, I told you to that. Um, but I thought you know we're coming on. Uh, well, you know, we just had this sixth anniversary of building fires in the snow. How cool could it be to you know have another volume of gay uh, LGBTQ fiction and poetry and maybe even expanded to essays, you know? Uh, um, I mean, we didn't do essays because we felt that people were already doing essays, you know, and not enough people were doing fiction and poetry in, in Alaska, but maybe expanded, you know, LG, um, building fires in the snow plus 10 or whatever, you know, and, uh, and see how things in the state have changed and how the state of writing in, in Alaska has changed. So, um, so, any one of you guys can take that on uh, and I'll be happy to read it or submit something to it. <laughs> um, I've been thinking, oh gosh, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just like really hard to share ideas sometimes. I've been really, been really vibing on uh, an anthology that uh, are BIPOC writers in Alaska. Yeah. Um, and, it, it, you know, it really stems from, you know, me being here and I'm just, I don't run across many black writers in Alaska. Um, and I know a lot of people that want to write and need the encouragement to write and, and at all different levels of writing. Um, I want to do an anthology that, that has work from writers who are functional literates. Um, I, you know, I know it doesn't, you know, it may be some difficult reading, but, you know, nevertheless, I, I've, I've run into some people that have great stories to tell. And I believe everyone has a story to tell and that we need to like do the work of decolonizing what 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 good writing is or, or what, what it isn't. So um, looking at other uh, types of writers out there and giving these other writers an, an opportunity to have their works published in print. And I just look forward to the day when you can go into to Juno, Fairbanks, or Homer, and these these uh, gift shops, and you see an anthology with, with black writers here. So people hear some voices of what it's like to be a person of color, like in Alaska, and be it this you know. And I see that this work is a uh, uh, fiction, nonfiction, and poetry as well. Just like, just give me whatever you got, people. Let's like let's make something something here so yeah 
Wow, that's a fantastic Top secret, so don't idea. tell nobody. <laughs> it's it's top secret. Secret. Now, now you said it. It's now you got to follow Ghost's advice, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just start. Just start. Uh, All right, everybody. Well, I had a lovely time with you this evening. Um, and I hope we can meet again. I know, Lucian, you'll probably be coming through town one of these days, uh, uh, right, with your book? Summer or maybe the fall, you know? Oh, yeah, we'll keep awesome. you on our radar. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. And I hope to see you all soon. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you. <laughs> Good night. Bye. Good night.